Oh, it's so beautiful. When it's all bright and stuff. Hey. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. We can't not give it back. You didn't happen to lose this, did you? Where did you find it? In the small salon. It's the only reminder I have of my beloved sister. I thought that swine stole it from me. You're her son, Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. Oh, yeah, I think she might be the horrible woman. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated. Hmm. The scar. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait. There must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've, I've got to go. Wait, I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Not psychology. You're right, I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already, I... I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that, not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Sister. Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No, he went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? 
My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. Oh. Hey, who was that? Volner? Well, bye. <laughs> I've been really enjoying the council so far. I think it's really cool. It's got some really cool concepts and systems and gameplay mechanics. But like the writing, that, the script, the dialogue for that entire conversation was so... It was a little bit off. Because I can't understand where she's coming from. We see her walking down the stairs and she's like, Excuse me, have you seen the thing I lost? Oh, by the way, your mother tortured me when I was like a kid and you're her son, but I'm... I'm sort of angry at you, but should I be angry at you because you saved me last night? Like, I, I didn't really feel like it really got the nuances of what she should be feeling towards me. But anyway, not gonna... let's not pick at it too much. It's still really enjoyable overall, so I don't really care. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. Hey, isn't it awesome he has a mask on? No lip syncing needed. <laughs> How many things can I ask about? Mortimer? The guests? Help me out. Well, let's go in order, I guess. There's not really one that I'm really wondering about. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? I know you're weak towards questioning, just like Elizabeth Adams. What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps, sir, uh, would like to know something else? Are they not allowed to say you? Is that considered rude? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. <laughs> From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Where's my mother then? Yeah, except for my mother. <laughs> has Sir uh, another question? What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, Sir. That is where Sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable Sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that Sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anything else, Sir? Sir, you can reach the second floor from the first floor. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes, what can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, Sir. In the west wing on the second floor are his private chambers. In the east wing are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, 
These rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir, but only authorized guests may access that area. Does sir have any more questions? I thought I asked you about the third floor, but you told me about the second? Yes, what can I find yeah, on what? the second floor? It's mislabeled. So what's on the second floor makes him ask about the first floor. And what's on the third floor makes him ask about the second floor. Yeah, it's supposed to be ground, second, third. But when they talk about it, it's like ground, first, second. I don't know what's going on. What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If Sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise Sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help Sir in any other way? Yes, you can help me by going away. Oh no, we got more. That's right. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Ooh, amber. Can I only have one? Mmm, amber would be really good. Manuscript. I'm guessing you can't give me everything. I'm gonna go for the thing I want the most first. Manuscript, a book. What kind of book are you gonna give me? Let's get an amber, cause... Those seem to be the rarest of what we've seen so far. I'm thinking between manuscript or amber. Let's go amber. My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. Whoa. Level 5. Come now, it has no value. Well, well, level 5. I think that's cute for me to use the water. Using the water to get a piece of amber? Is it worth it? Well, otherwise, the water is just gonna sit there, so... Yeah. Well, no point in lying, you know. I know full well you haven't got any. I would never think of lying, sir. I don't believe I am authorized to give it away. That is all. Amber? Here? I'd be surprised. Yet, I assure you, sir... No, you're pulling my leg. I don't believe you. I wouldn't dare to joke with, sir. Yeah, sure. You're just leading me on. I dare you to show it to me, if you really have some. Well, then, sir, here is a piece. Ah, right. Well, I'm impressed. Can you lend it to me for a minute? <laughs> of course, sir. Well, bye. Thanks for the help. Here. Wow. I can hardly believe it. Well, I have other questions. Of course, sir. But, sir, I believe you haven't given me back the amber, sir. What? What amber? The piece I gave to sir. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You really ought to look after your things. And it can't be easy to come across amber in these parts. Ah. Um, well... Does Sir <laughs> desire anything else? <laughs> if it works, I guess. Oh, one, two, three. Yeah, now we have eight effort point slots. Awesome, awesome. And we can still ask about the other stuff. Golden elixir. What was that one again? Yeah, cures negative stuff. Uh, I want a manuscript. Do you have a page of the encyclopedia? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir, and I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend sir a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Hand it over, okay. Manipulation or conviction? We actually know that the servant is weak towards manipulation, because it just said, right? Oh! They're actually weak towards a lot of things. Yeah, that makes sense because... Because we are, um... I'm the guest and you're the servant. Hmm. Oh! All of Mortimer's servants wear a mask. We don't know why. 
We don't know why. Maybe they're really ugly. <laughs> well, in that case, this guy needs a mask too. <laughs> okay. Do we want it? Manuscript for three effort points. Yeah, I have full jellies right now. Might as well use it. And I don't think I need to use my water this time. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope so will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh, there you are then. That's exactly where I left it. I am quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now. But, sir, I... Very well, sir. Here you <laughs> are. May, sir, take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you. <laughs> the Sorrows of Young Werther. That's page... One skill point in psychology. It's not actually damaged. I thought by damaged, it meant that it's one of these ones where you have to get multiple pages, but nope. Might as well keep asking and see if he wants to give me anything else. Maltese cross? I still haven't quite recovered after the boat crossing. Would you have any Maltese cross by any chance, please? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Maltese cross may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. But can I have it? I'm not saying I'm gonna use it. Diuretic effects. Maybe we can make someone leave the room and go to the washroom. Conviction. We can't do erudition. I guess we'll try it out. Yeah. And I want to save my water. Yeah. Do not fret. I know the effects of the Maltese cross very well. I've been taking it for years without any adverse effects so far. I've never had cause to complain. You can believe me. That is well, sir. Here is Sir's herb. What else can I do for you, sir? So Devil's Thorn is the same as Maltese Cross? Okay. Huh. A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. Do I want to use all my royal jellies to get these items? Yeah, whatever, whatever. What? That's the last straw. Lord Mortimer himself asked me to take the sea to join him here. I accepted out of kindness. The voyage was undertaken in conditions that I prefer not speak about. And then at long last I arrive and, and you refuse me a simple flask of Carmelite water? No, sir, I, I... Your name, tell me your name. D uh, uh, here, sir, your Carmelite water. Uh, please accept my sincerest apologies. If sir requires anything else whatsoever, <laughs> sir has only to ask. Okay, I will ask. You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. Well, I'm not here for a treatment. Logic. Um, we're here already. Royal jelly's worth not that much. Oh! Okay! You have used four consumable items during a single quest or consumed a noxious element. Dialogue timer is no longer visible. Oh! No, I need it. I need it. I can't not have it. We're gonna have to take a golden elixir for it. Which is really stupid because that's what I'm trying to get right now. Yeah, that's really stupid. <laughs> so, okay, well... Eh, plus minus zero. Not the biggest problem we could be running into right now. Um, yeah. That's fine. I have no intention of swallowing this remedy. You see, I generally use it to put the shine back on my shoes. 
but maybe you'd rather I ask permission from Lord Mortimer. Where is he? I'd like to tell him about my shoe problem. Sir, need do nothing of the sort. There is no reason to disturb Lord Mortimer with this small matter. As you wish. Here you are, sir. I hope sir will have enough with one bottle, as I haven't any more. Oh, I'll make do. It's good of you to get this much. May I do anything else for sir? Get out of my face. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Oh, so we got a whole bunch of items, but we probably have to take the golden elixir here because I don't like not seeing the dialogue timer. I think that's pretty crucial. Yeah, so we're just gonna... The one that he just gave us, we're gonna use it. It's okay. It means that we learn about the system now. But I do wonder, if we take four items in the same quest, we get intoxicated. Well, now we took five. Is it okay? I hope so. We're not gonna get intoxicated again, right? Only once during each quest. I'm hoping. Wow, there's... I thought we were done with the tutorial stuff, but there's more. There's always more. Goodness. Holy. And now we only have one effort point after that. It seems like the servant's actually weak against pretty much everything. I guess it's because... There's three different skill trees here, and you don't know what the player is gonna pick. But you want them to be able to have something at least, so they pretty much made the servants vulnerable to everybody and anybody. Now where did Washington and company go again? We can't go back up. Oh, that's the... Um, that is not the salon. That is not the salon. Oh. Oh, I can't look at the place. Yeah, that's a salon. So if I don't go to the salon, then we're not done yet, right? Which means I should be going here first. Okay. Oh, shoot! Oh, this is the red salon. Okay. Well, hopefully we can go visit the other place later. Dang it. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends and no one to meet me? To. Oh. oh, no. It's the least one can say. <laughs> Peru looks totally out of place here. Don't trouble yourself. <laughs> He's counting uh -huh. the tin sets of cutlery around each plate? The man is completely lost. <laughs> and you, sir. Thank Etiquette. you again for the wine, your eminence. Well, it is served every day at the king's table. Please, feel it. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad oh. to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, then. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Oh. Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Souterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favourite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that 
connector here at this table, the finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. Oh. The bedrooms, washrooms and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Psychology. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mentioned that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. <sighs> she likes kids? She was an orphan? <laughs> Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Um. Yeah, we've never talked to him before. My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur Louis Maurras de Richet. De Richet? De Richet? A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? Ooh, etiquette, yeah. The presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility, nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette, Monsieur Von Bonnel. Whoa! He just told him off. Napoleon looks kind of emo. Have you any information on this Napoleon? My friend. We can make an assumption. No. Not really, no. What do you think, madam? What is this Bonaparte doing here? The presence of a soldier is never a good sign. It can only mean there's going to be further war. To answer your question, I only know that his family were in favor of the revolution and that it almost cost them their lives. Yes. Thank you, that's helpful. Unlike me, I haven't been helpful to Washington at all. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? We. Oui. We're fellow Frenchmen and all. Even though you're the only one with a French accent here for some reason. <laughs> Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Show well, how competent course. I am. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. Wait, wait. Do we know anything about Napoleon? No, of course not. It's the first time we've spoken to him. I don't know. How would I know? I'm not the financial guy here, and there's no skills that give me financials either. Although it seems like we could have done something for... Etiquette? Etiquette. Okay, so we can say no but not offend him, maybe. Let's try that. Here we go. I've only just taken over the affair. The agreement will be considered null and void until we've gone through it together. Is that clear? All right. You seem to know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Mm. What does that say? Manipulation? Sure. 
I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. Wow. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. Well, at least one person thinks I'm competent around here. <laughs> My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Oh. Oh, no. Washington is a very gifted speaker. <laughs> Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Hey, so this was a breakfast after all, not a dinner. Maybe it's a British versus American English thing? Oh, okay. Wines and cannons. But I dirtied one part? Oh, the letter! Success! I found my mother's message hidden in the book, but I dirtied one part. I managed to persuade Elizabeth Adams to talk to me about her mother and my mother. I gave her back her talisman. I met the guests during dinner. I proved to Napoleon to be my mother's worthy successor. I searched Elizabeth Adams' room. Alternate paths. I could have searched Napoleon's room. Oh, that actually makes me think that previously, we might have been missing quite a bit because it mentions stuff like, I could have had a remarkable encounter. I thought it meant alternate, as in, you couldn't have picked that one because you picked something else. But Napoleon here, if we had subterfuge, we could have done it, so it's not alternate so much as, you missed it. <laughs> okay, well, we missed less this time than last time, I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, we're just gonna have to keep seeing this from now on. But one thing I sort of also don't like is how they show you the options to use in the dialogue even if you can't use them. Again, it's very gamey and I don't think it makes much sense. If I didn't kill Jack Peru, I shouldn't be able to say that, but I feel like I also shouldn't be able to see the choice that I could have said that. I guess the thinking behind it is, hey, look, there's an alternate choice here. Maybe you want to play the game again just to see what you can do here? I guess that's what they're thinking here. We got some new traits, vulnerabilities, new people. Okay, Volner and Napoleon. Subterfuge, subterfuge, forget it. Eight points, eight points. Science might be a good one because we got to read the notes that we picked up off Elizabeth Adams's room. Politics? Oh, we couldn't do anything at the table because everyone was here for politics, but I couldn't. I couldn't do anything there, no. Anyway, we're a subterfuge. Yes. Discreetly steal items, pick locks, notice falsification. 
Don't even have to think about it. Okay. These ones, I'll just let it do whatever. Yeah, this can be, this can happen naturally. My focus is going to be getting all the level zeros to level one first. Occultism? Shh. For two more? Sure. And then erudition? Science. Linguistics. Politics. Diversion. Um, I want science, but I will say, oh, what about my books? What books do I have? Etiquette, psychology, politics. I do want the politics book. I want politics so that I can speak at the dinner and not be an idiot. Yeah. Okay, so I have conviction, politics, or psychology. What about my talent? How's this doing? Reach level 3. Ooh, this one's good. Increase time for opportunities. It's not a huge problem because I can just open the journal, but eh. Level 3 and diversion. Level 3, we're not reaching that anytime soon. Anything we're close to? Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Obtain all level 1 skills. Oh, hey, this is good. 10% more experience. That could add up quickly. Yeah, couldn't it? Definitely. Definitely. Okay, well, we'll just let it happen. Because there's not really much else I can do besides let it happen. Anyway, three points here. Mm. I want sci- Should I get science or politics? Let's get politics. Science? There's no way to tell which one we'll see soon. Let's do politics, because we, uh, yeah, three skills in occultism, three skills in diplomat, just seems right. There we go. And then, oh, shoot, I forgot about my book. Yeah, I could have just used this for the politics point, but that's okay, that's okay. I can get a point in... Oh, no, 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 I can undo this, right? Remove. Yeah, yeah, so I'll put two points here, and then three points here, and then... Two points here. I'll save one point, and I'll get this point by reading the book. Does that mean that I get it by the next quest, or... Like, how long do I have to wait? I'm not too sure about that part. Hmm. Yeah, this one... This is the book I'm reading right now, and... You know what? Let's not risk it, actually. Let's just get the politics. Whatever. It's not like the one point's gonna make a difference right now anyway. No. I just don't know when they'll give me that level 1. I don't want to go into the next quest not having politics level 1 when I could have had level 1. Okay, in that case, psychology or conviction then, maybe. Conviction is here. Psychology is this one. Would be nice to get a free skill, but I would rather get this up higher first. Conviction it is. Am I reading it? Oh, I can't read it yet. I gotta do my points first. 